Welcome, Ben. So firstly, it's great to meet you, buddy. And thank you for taking the time to come and join me on the show today. Looks like it's my pleasure. Looks like you've been super busy and up to some awesome stuff lately with your podcast, Blood, Sweat and Beers. So before we dive into the world of the supernatural, please tell everyone a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, the podcast and what you're working on right now. Yeah. Um, so, hey, I'm Ben. Um, I'm a co-host for Blood, Sweat and Beers uh, and a musician as well. Um, basically, Blood, Sweat and Beers is a music podcast with a difference. It's like the new age MTV, but with real time feedback. Uh, so we host streams every week on Twitch um, and we always have a special guest from the industry, be it a, a, you know, a musician or a manager or a label uh, that join us live on air. And we listen to new music that has been submitted by our community. And yeah, we all kind of talk and critique it, I guess is probably the best way of putting it. Um, I, I run the show, well, I host the show with Danny Marty Ray, and we also host once a month with Jarrett Reddick from Bowling for Soup um, on our Greatest Hits of the Month stream, which is called Tipsy Tuesday. Um, yeah, it's just a good time. It's a lot of fun. Um, I love it. I've been in the music industry for my whole life. I grew up um, on the outskirts of near London, um, a little place called Tame. Um I ended up doing a disappearing act at the age of 15 um, and uh, ended up in Leicester of all places, which is where I now reside. Um, I'm a dad of one. Um, and yeah, that's basically me in a nutshell as quick as I can on that. You certainly have some really great guests on your show, man. And it looks like you guys have got a really awesome community to go with it as well. So yeah, you should be mega proud of what you guys are doing. Thank you. Have you always been intrigued by the paranormal? Was it something that you were interested in from an early age or? Absolutely obsessed. <laughs> like Since as long as I can remember, I have always been uh, massively obsessed with the paranormal, uh, just obviously as a kid, ghosts and just the, the kind of that term. And yeah, it's always been a thing of mine. So I take it you've investigated or, you know, explored haunted locations and if so yeah. you know what what were they like for you um word of advice in my opinion don't go to these big locations that are net like you know that are inverted commas famous and um, i'll give you an example so i did i've done a lot of ghost nights and investigations and i've done solo stuff as well um and it was my dream to go to east drive uh in pont uh pont is it what was it pontifract, pontifract um, yeah yeah so basically a few years back, I i mean, my surname is Pritchard. Now, the family that were famously haunted by Fred the, the Fred the Poltergeist there were the Pritchard family. And I felt that there was a connection. So I was like, I really want to go see it. Uh, the studio that I work in a lot of the time for music is near there. So one day I thought I'm going to rock up. There was I knew there was a ghost night going on. I'm going to knock on the door and see if they'll let me just have a little walk around. Um, and it was amazing because they gave me the house to myself. They went, look, yeah, come in, come in. We'll, we'll kick everyone out for like 20 minutes. You can go and look around on your own. So I was really fortunate and it had a real big kind of awe about the place. It was very, uh, it felt kind of malevolent when I went there on my own. And then my my lovely mum, hi mum, by the way, she'll definitely be listening at some point, I guess. Um, she bought me tickets to go and do an overnight ghost stay at East Drive. And me and my stepdad, we went and we thought this is going to be amazing. And they crammed like 30 people into this tiny house because obviously, you know, if you sell tickets, you're going to make more money. And unfortunately, it, it was just a nightmare. You know, you're in a very small free bedded semi-detached house with 28, 29 other people. And you can't tell if there's a bang. You can't tell if there's it because they, they were split into groups. So my advice has always been try and find places where you potentially are allowed to kind of solo investigate with your own team. Or if you are going to go on a ghost night through one of these commercial ghost companies, go to a big location. Don't go to one of these famous small houses because you won't, you know, you've got no hope of, of knowing what you see or capture because there's just too much going on. A lot of those ghost stars, I've been on a few <clears> myself and sadly they just do feel like a money maker for the organizer a lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So did you say you were in the 30 East drive by, by yourself or? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Man, yeah. you said you said you were lucky to do that. I don't know. I don't know if lucky is the right word. But you must <laughs> be really into this stuff, man. I, I I'm a, yeah. Yeah. 
I'm obsessed. I couldn't imagine anything worse than being in that house alone. And the coolest thing about it, yeah, and it's, I don't get scared. It's weird. I mean, I I don't know. Is this, are we on video? Are we doing, it's just audio, isn't it? We're just, Um, I can put a video on YouTube if you're happy with that, dude. If if you're happy to do it. The only reason I say that is because I will introduce you to Lily, um, who is my haunted doll that I got this year. I got literally last year, my, my fiance got me Lily. This is Lily. She holds my. Sorry, I'm just. She's not meant to be showing off my bowling for soup, but all access passes. But um, <laughs> she holds onto it for me. But she moves on her own. And no way. I came back from the states. I was in the states for. Um, I don't need to sit there. Um, I was in the states for about six weeks, and I, I got her while I was over in America. And as I as I say, my fiance and my amazing fiance bought her for me as a, as a gift for Christmas. Um, when I came back to the UK, I got her out. I got her out for the first time. And within an hour, I I kid you not, she had moved. Um, and I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. And then nothing's really happened since until today. No, it was yesterday um, when I was I was on meetings. I was sitting here on meetings and I actually showed someone in the meetings, Lily, and I knew exactly where she was placed. And after the meetings finished, and I'm I'm curious, we don't record these meetings, but she'd moved by the end of the meeting. So she's yeah, she likes to move around a bit. She's uh, she's cool. Where did she originally come from? I don't know. I don't know. She's just known as being a haunted doll. And like, my thing is, is that a lot of what you buy on the internet and online, as you like you said with the ghost nights, can sometimes be sold for commercial purposes. Mm. I wonder that, but I've been, uh, there's definitely something in this house and I've definitely been conjuring a little bit with Lily, trying to see if I can get them to focus on Lily as an object. So I wonder if it's that. I wonder if there is a story behind it. I don't know, but she's she's was sold as to us as a haunted doll. So yeah. So yeah, you're That's clearly it. not very scared of this stuff. What what are your beliefs? Like what what are ghost spirits to you? Uh, it's a really difficult question because I'm not religious and I don't know about anyone else, but I do sometimes when I hear about how it's like, oh, there was a malevolent spirit and then they did an exorcism and it was all like, you know, peace and love. And I'm like, I don't know if I believe in the religious aspect because I'm just not religious at all. Um, I kind of fell out of love with religion at a really young age. I genuinely, my, my, my kind of belief that I've always stuck with is that there is so many vessels on this earth, meaning bodies, and there are so many souls. And if a soul can't find a body or there's not enough bodies to go around or they just choose not to, they will spend time in almost like a purgatory, which is, you know, where we get spirits from in the afterlife. And until they choose to move into a new vessel or they, you know, they might never do. They might never confirm that they want to do that. And they spend the rest of eternity just floating around, I guess, um, and and being, you know, trapped in this place. Um, I know that we talk a lot about in, in the paranormal world about residual hauntings as well as intelligent hauntings. And residual hauntings is something that I've experienced a lot of, and I don't know what that is. I, I just don't, I can't tell you, but it's the same thing, I guess, when you, you have that moment of deja vu where something happens and you're like, hang on, this has happened before. And I wonder if like a residual haunt is, is like a spiritual version of that. I'm not. Yeah. It's cool. a confusing world. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good insight, man. You know, I've done, this is coming up to 50 episodes now and yeah. it's just fascinating how so many different people have different opinions on what they think is going on. And like, yeah. I don't think even with how crazy technology is nowadays, I think it moves us further from mm. spirituality so I don't think we'll ever yeah. find out what's going on. Maybe until we die. Maybe until we uh, yeah. until we're gone. But what is it that originally sparked your interest? Sounds like your family have uh, somewhat of an interest in this stuff. So I take it that's where your interest perked up uh, in the first place. Yeah. So it started off um, because of my stepdad. Thanks, thanks, Nigel, for this. Um, when he moved into our house. Um, things started happening some weird 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 things and everyone kind of didn't talk to each other about it it was like you know my mum would see things and she just wouldn't say anything to us and we would see things and think we were going crazy and I remember one of the early instances of me being because I was obviously as a kid I was scared like I was you know I was obsessed with it but I was scared um because I didn't understand it and I remember if I was downstairs when my mum went out and I was home alone, 
I wouldn't go upstairs to my room. There was a threshold bit at the top of the stairs that was that was dark. That that, that one little kind of square in the house, which just felt felt horrendous. Um, and if I was upstairs in my room and someone knocked on the door, I no word of a lie, I climbed out the bedroom window, jumped onto the toilet roof, which is the downstairs toilet roof, and I would get out the house that way. I would not go down the stairs. Um, and one day I kind of spoke to my mum about it and she was like, yeah, there's, I've seen something there. And it was just this black mass. It, it, it had an outline, it had a shadow, but it wasn't, there was no features. There was no, like, you couldn't tell if it was male, female, you know, it, it just was this black mass. And the day that it really sparked me was I'd got up in the middle of the night, gone downstairs. I was in the bathroom, uh, the bathroom, sorry, in the kitchen, making a drink. And I, I was looking out the kitchen window so I could see the, behind me i could see the kitchen from the reflection and all of a sudden this black mass just appeared behind me and just completely swallowed the, the light you know um and that's when i first really spoke to my mum told her like this has happened i'm seeing this thing on the stairs the stairs scare the crap out of me i really don't know what to um what to think and she said yeah i've seen the same thing she used to own an ironing business and she'd be ironing in the living room and sitting on the couch um in the other room in the, in, in one of the, i think the dining room is how she would call it we had like a leather couch and she would see it sitting there you know watching her um and again it was kind of freaky um, but it, you know, I just was kind of avoiding the stairs and, and I was a bit kind of a bit more mindful of the kitchen. And who was only probably about six or seven at the time, woke up one night in floods of tears because something had been sitting behind her door staring at her. And when we asked her, I was the first one on the scene, I was the first one to get to her room. She said it was just a black figure. Um and again, it was like, you know, she's she's never heard us have these conversations. She's like six years old, you know. It just kind of really kind of cemented it for me that we were seeing something. And the reason I blame my stepdad for this is he used to live next door. And him and my mum were, were neighbours years and years ago. Always sounds like they had an affair together, which they didn't, which always makes me laugh. But when he lived next door, the same things were happening at that house. And I think he had something following him. Um, yeah, so... So you believe that your stepdad brought this thing into your family home? Yeah. So nothing happened before your mum met him, right? Not that I remember. I mean, it, I was I was only eleven when they moved in together, and you know, for me, a lot of my memories prior to that, I think having a mum and dad that get divorced, like I repressed a lot of memories. So I can't really say was there anything before, but I, I know that my stories and what I remember all started from the day that he you know, moved in and from then, then onwards. I could totally relate to you. Um, I've been through pretty much similar uh, circumstances as you and similar things happened, you know, since my mum, she's not with him anymore, but yeah, she got married to this guy and they just felt like there was so much dark, heavy, negative energy in our house. And mm. I heard, saw uh, so many things happened and yeah, it's crazy. So in your opinion, What's going on there with this activity and these dark apparitions? Why do you think that something had followed him? I don't know. I mean, we've all we, we've sat down and had many conversations about what could it be, who is it, what what is it, and and everything. And yeah, so um, as I say, um, we no one can really answer it, but. I know that he has, we've spoken to him, I've spoken to him and he has always been able to see things that aren't there and hear things that weren't there. And he said he remembers being even in primary school that they, I, I can't remember where, I think it might've been like an, in an assembly and he used to feel someone like playing with his hair or he'd see these orbs everywhere, just kind of like guiding around him. It's always like something was, you know, guiding him. Um, and I, I know that I, some of the freakiest stories I've ever been told about the paranormal have come from him. You know, um, he's seen a lot and yeah, it's, it's crazy. Um, he's taught me a lot of li little techniques as well to communicate, which is um, uh, yeah, a lot of people think I'm crazy, but you know, like glass movement and Ouija boards and stuff like that. And yeah, it's taught me a lot of that. So. Do you believe in good and evil? Yeah, 100%. 
And I, I think in in life as well, good people do evil things and evil people do good things. And it's I don't think that changes in the afterlife as well. Can you share with us a particularly chilling or unsettling story that's really stuck with you over the years? Yeah. OK, so for my personal one, um, I remember this is like clear as day. And the reason it was so creepy was because I could, I've never been able to understand what had happened. Um, I remember waking up one night and I used to have this like black set of drawers. There was two sets of two drawers and I had them because of, I had the box room in the house. Uh, I had them stacked on top of each other. So there was four drawers in total. And one night and they were behind my head where my bed was. And one night I heard them open and close and open and closing. And I thought, you know, what's going on? Like who's in my room? Who's, who's messing around with my stuff? When I woke up in the morning, they were open like a staircase. So there was four of them and they were open, like gradually closed as they went higher. So I came downstairs and I said to my mum, I said, look, next time you, you know, put in clothes away at night, will you make sure you close my drawers? And she said, I haven't been in your room. I haven't been anywhere near you. No one's been in your room. And her room was next to mine. And she goes, nobody's been in there. And I don't know to this day what had opened those drawers and left them like a staircase. And I, that that was always like really weird. Not that they'd been opened, but how they were left, if that makes sense. Almost like it was, it was calculated. It was like a pattern. Um, and then I know I mentioned my stepdad with his creepy stories. And uh, the one that really stands out with me that he told me was him and my stepsister went over to that her, my well, my stepdad's dad's house, um, her grandfather's house. He lived in the woods in the middle of nowhere. Um, they lived in a house that they built themselves. They previously had lived in a converted London bus on the land. And they built this house. And it was a really dark house, like yeah there was something not right about this house that and he'd, he'd agree with me you know when he watches his back he'll be like yeah yeah there was definitely something wrong with it and they knocked on the door to go see him and they heard swearing you know effing blinding this that yelling at the dog because the dog was barking going absolutely mental being really nasty and they he my my stepdad was like no we need to go um He's not obviously not in a good mood. And as they were leaving the property, they got in the car, started driving down the road. And they passed him coming back to the house because he'd been out. He wasn't home. He'd gone out with my, my step my, my stepdad's brother in my stepdad's brother's car. And uh, yeah, they passed him on the way home. And there was no one in the house. Like he lived alone. Like it was yeah. So that always stood out to me. And then my co-host for Blood, Sweat and Beer is Danny. Um, he had an experience with a mimic where he and this always chilled me when he told me this is he was home alone he heard his mum calling for him to come upstairs to help him and he was going to go and then it clicked that his mum and dad weren't home and he looked out the window to double check the cars were gone and yeah there was something that was calling him upstairs and rule of thumb never follow a mimic <laughs> like do, uh, do you know what's people. crazy dude i've i've had the exact same experience i don't know if you've listened to many of our episodes but in our first yeah. ever episode I tell the full story and I, this was what, back when I lived at home with my mum and stepdad at the time and I had a knock on my bedroom door and it clear as day it was my stepdad and he said Jamie come downstairs now in like an angry tone mm. and I went I went downstairs and said to my mum about it and I said oh you know what does he want because I used to just spend so much time alone in my room I was like you know yeah, yeah, yeah. alone and then I was just like it's just a bit out of place it was weird but yeah, the full story is on the thing, but man, yeah. So, and the weirdest thing is not just Danny, not just me, like so many people have told me this exact same story on this podcast, yeah. dude. It's like, you, can, you, you can't deny it, right? Yeah, exactly. And this is we're the not, thing. We're not is... all just making it up. We're not all just crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is, this is the thing. I'm, I've never experienced a mimic as such. Like I've never had that happen. The coolest thing, I mean, the, at my old house um when this is when i was married um my little boy was and this is again you be having a one-year-old this is gonna creep you uh, so i'm so sorry in advance but right so he was about one years old nearly two and we were sitting down me and my ex-wife watching tv and we heard him you know chatting away you think oh you know he's chatting we as clear as day heard an old man talk back to him my ex-wife because this is just a habit that she did. She ended up in a ball of tears on the floor, crying her eyes out. 
me, I went up to the room and started investigating because I was so excited. Um, and when my little boy was born, this is my favorite memory of something that I can't explain that gave me a lot of peace. Um, he was really poorly. He ended up in hospital. And when uh, I went home one night, which was the first night he was been, he'd been born. Um, and yeah, he'd, um, one second, because he's just coming in the room. He does this every time I'm doing something. He's like, he has to be involved. His, his kids. Um, but yeah, so um, the, he, when he was he was born, he was really poorly. Um, he wasn't breathing. He was blue when he came when when he came out. And the doctor said, "Well, you know, speak to him," and not being religious, I started praying. But I wasn't praying to to God. I was praying to my granddad, who'd recently passed away, you know, to help him. And he was absolutely fine. You know, he was, yeah, it was, it was normal as they come after that. Uh, that night when I went home, I heard my granddad say, "Hey, up, son," as I walked through the front door. And it was like, whoa, you know? Um, so I do think that in the afterlife, there's good and there is bad. And it's, you know, I don't think there's a rhyme or reason for it. You know, my granddad, I think he was hanging around to protect my nan um, because she was on her own now. And I do think that some people have unfinished business or just aren't ready to move on. That's a heartwarming story, dude. And firstly, I'm sorry to hear that, you know, your son went through what mm. he went through. That must have been difficult. But yeah, like, you know, something so special must has come out of that. And, you know, it's really yeah. must have really opened your eyes to, you know, that we're we're not necessarily alone in this world. And yeah. you know, when when our loved ones pass, that sometimes they are still here with us. Yeah, a hundred percent. So you you believe that that voice you heard it was you my granddad. Was your granddad, yeah. And I think the voice that I heard the day when I heard my son playing upstairs and talking to someone was him as well, you know, paying him a visit. Um, and I, I imagine you spoke about this a lot on the, on the podcast, but I, I know a lot of people talk about being children, being a lot more susceptible to the afterlife. Like there's more of a, the veil between life and death is thinner at an early age, which is why they believe that imaginary friends a lot of the time aren't actually imaginary but the reason they disappear is because the child has lost touch with the with the, you know, the afterlife. Um, and I, I massively believe that as well. I I completely agree. And I think also with the way the world is now, we, we, we're not necessarily in touch with, with that side of things, you know, yeah, we're not as primitive as we used to be. So, mm. yeah. Um, but yeah, so, Man, you mentioned previously about, you know, glass moving and certain techniques that you learn. I'd love to hear yeah. some more about those abilities. Yeah, I mean, it's mainly, I mean, glass moving is the main one. Um, I've shown people glass moving that don't believe me. Um, and I love doing it because eventually if I can build up enough energy within the glass, I can get the glass to move on its own. Um, and I think a lot of people, when they have a closed off mind, they genuinely need the glass to shoot across the table for them to go, oh my God, the glass is moving. Um, but when you can make a, you know, a yes, no side of the table or, or a yes or yes and no um, person within the group for it to move towards um, and you see it going in that direction, being really responsive to the questions you're asking, it is crazy. Um, and what I always try and do is once there's enough energy built up within the glass, I will remove myself from that and allow the people that are there to to continue. Um, I haven't done it in so long, though. That's the thing, because my fiance is very anti doing stuff like this. Um, she won't do Ouija boards. She's like she's she's Native American. So she's um, she's very spiritual herself. And she they're very connected in her um in in her beliefs and everything like that so i think with what i do sometimes she's like, i'm gonna have to get the sage and i'm gonna have to smudge you like <laughs> because some of the stuff i go up to but um <clears throat> yeah i haven't done the glass moving in a long time um i've had a really cool table tipping experience um for those i mean you're familiar with table tipping where the table will rock each it's a side to side um i did one at an event where i was there with my stepdad and we were like there's something not right here so we were initially holding the table like that so you've got you know your um your thumb at the bottom and your, the, the palm of your hand on top and it's rocking you know back and forth for yes and no and you think he could have been moving it or i could have been moving it so to really kind of eradicate that 
um, skepticism, we laid our hands opposite way around with the palms facing upwards. So we had no grip on the table and it's still going, it's still rocking. Yes, no, yes, no. And it was unbelievable to the point where we turned this table upside down and inspected every last inch of it, thinking there has got to be a device causing this. And no, it was it was just natural. It was just going. So I think open mindedness can help you with a lot of these activities. Um, and one of the things my one advice, if you are going to get involved in glass moving, um, it is basically a Ouija board without actually using, you know, a planchette and a, a children's board game. Um, or if you are going to use the Ouija board, please make sure that you're safe. Uh, make sure that you always ask a spirit to leave and, and confirm that you're closing it off. Don't ever leave it open because it can be a gateway. Um, and yeah, you need to always be polite on entry and polite on exit. So what's going on there, man? Is this telekinesis your own energy or are you summoning spirits? It's to do with summoning spirits. Um, I, we, I The first time I ever did it, I was absolutely blown away that like this glass was moving on its own after calling a spirit in. Um, and then as soon as I asked the spirit to leave, and again, I did it with my mum and my stepdad, the spirit left and it just went dead. And I'm sitting there going, at some points I'm like, I'm, am I pushing this? And then I'm like, no, let me take my finger off. And then eventually, and this is what blew my mind. We all didn't have our fingers on this glass and it's still moving. You know, it's still moving around the table without anyone touching it. And that just blew me, it blew my mind. I could not believe what I was witnessing. And I've done it on multiple occasions and had the same thing happen. It's crazy. As much as I love this stuff, mate, I think that would scare me witless. <laughs> we'll have to do it sometime. I'll, See, it's, I'll, I'll be up for it. Uh, yeah, it's good fun. It's good fun. And Ouija boards, again, I, I never understand... People that sit there and say about Ouija boards being, you know, um, evil and stuff like that. Because I think it's, it, you know, I think anything in the wrong hands can be evil and anything in the right hands can be quite good. Um, I'm assuming, have you watched Project Fear on YouTube? I've heard of it, but I've not really, I've not really watched it. No. Check it out. It's amazing. But they've recently had... Um, I know oh, what was the names Satori and Cody who have been coming under a lot of fire recently in the paranormal community for faking um, the human Ouija board where they apparently they get these walk ghosts just walking around, stomping around them just from them holding hands. Um, and they were using an alphabet method, but they were going A, B, C, D, E, F. And then when they heard a stomp, they would stop on that letter and it would spell things out. Um and they've just been caught out for um, clicking their heels and stuff like that to make mm. the noise. And it's a really interesting thing. If you get a chance to watch it, do. Um, but again, it just shows that like anything, I mean, I've done things where I've said, you know, not for yet, once for yes, twice for no. And in the wrong hands, it can be, it could be, you know, malicious, like with this Satori and Cody faking things to tell people that their dead relatives are coming through when they're not, you know, it's, yeah. When you're getting involved in this kind of stuff, you, you've you certainly got to be careful. I had a really fascinating conversation um, with a guy called Stephen from the Night Owl podcast, and he's very heavily involved in this stuff. And he was telling me about the importance of, you know, these, you know, rituals, so to speak, to, to, to protect yourself and make sure yeah, you're safe. Yeah. Because like you say, man, there are, I really do believe there are good and there are evil forces yeah. in this world. And you know, and they can they can be used for positive or for negative. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, for me personally, I've done one Ouija board before, but it's, it's unless I'm with, you know, a professional, somebody that really knows what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I'd be willing to, you know, open open myself up to that. Um, but it's, by the sounds of it, you you do it, you know, just for. You, oh, you, I, you sound like you know what you're doing. So uh, yeah, I enjoy it and. I wouldn't say I know what I'm doing. I'm just like, um, it's weird. And I might come across on this, on this interview, I might be coming across as an absolute weirdo, but like it is on my bucket list at least once to experience a possession just because, and I know that sounds crazy and I, I know how crazy that sounds, but I would like to see if possession is real. Cause I'm a little bit unsure on possession. And I'd also like to experience how much control you would still have. 
but there is no way of being in a controlled environment with something like a possession. So I'm like, well, you know. Well, when you're <laughs> when you're possessed, can we get you on for another interview? Yeah, we'll do it. Interview with a possessed geezer. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent, one hundred percent. All right, man. Well, just to finish up, I like to ask a silly question. If you were a ghost, what would be the first thing you did? I've been thinking about this and this, I don't know if I've got a silly answer, but like, first of all, I mean, everybody gives the answer. Oh, I'd scare my friends I'd scare my partner. I do, you know, but I think I genuinely use it in a way where any show that I ever wanted to go to just walk in any football match, you know, go watch, I'm a Newcastle fan and go watch Newcastle whenever I want. No one can stop me. Just walk in. I think I'd use it for my own gain so much. Like I, yeah, anything, new movie comes out, wicked. I'm in the cinema, I haven't got to pay for it, you know? The the BAFTAs or, you know, anything like that happens. I can just go and be on the red carpet. No one would know, you know? Just start tripping up celebrities on the red carpet. That's what I'll do. There we go. You know the um, musician Pip Marsh, don't you? He was on my show yeah, like a few yeah. weeks ago, man. He had pretty much the same answer. Where yeah, he'd go to what? Yeah, of course you would, man. Like what? What an amazing thing to do! Exactly. Yeah. It, yeah. You just you just be anywhere at any time doing yeah. whatever you want, like quality. And you just like have portals everywhere, so you haven't even got to travel. It's like wicked. You know, I yeah, fancy going to Spain today. And got to sit on oh. some sweaty aeroplane for four hours. Yeah, no more Ryanair cheap flights, yeah. no leg room. <laughs> you know, just wicked over to Spain. Happy days, Beetlejuice on the beach. You know, it's sorted. <laughs> Oh, dude. Well, it's been really good to meet you. And, and you. It's, yeah, it's been great having you on, dude. Uh, where can our listeners find more about your show and more about you and your wonderful yeah. podcast? So uh, we're on uh, Blood, Sweat and Beers, which if you know our website is bloodsweatandbeers.tv. Um, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram and uh, on all the socials, TikTok and everything. It's BSB Show Official on all social media, apart from Facebook, which is being changed at the moment, but it is currently Blood, Sweat and Beers, the uh, yeah, Blood, Sweat and Beers podcast. Um, and yeah, look out for, we've got loads of guests coming up. We've got Jarrett's obviously joining us again. I think the 12th of March, we've got him on uh, with Lolo, who signed to Hopeless Records. That should be a really cool episode. Uh, we've got Telly from The Word Alive joining us soon and loads of people in the alternative scene, you know, guests and record labels and stuff coming on as special guests. And if you have got any music you'd like to submit, hit us up on those platforms and we'll be sure to check it out. Well, you're smashing it, man, and it's good to see you're doing well. Uh, send me over a couple of links and I'll put them in the description for this podcast so Wicked. people can just click them. Yeah, thank Amazing. you so much for your time, dude. Cheers, dude. Thank you very much. See you later, mate. Bye.